just obey laws, but so do galaxies. In fact, every particle, every organism, every planet, every galaxy follows fine-tuned laws. The most basic are the laws of logic. Imagine, for example, a universe without the law of non-contradiction. Then something could be both true and false at the same time. What kind of universe would that be? We can hardly imagine an orderly universe based on anything but the laws of logic. Then, built upon the laws of logic are the laws of mathematics. And the universe obeys these laws as well. Can you imagine a universe where you couldn't count? Built upon the laws of mathematics are the laws of physics. Rules of light, energy, gravity, motion. And those laws are foundational to laws of chemistry and the laws of biology. The laws of the universe are woven together in an unseen tapestry, which must be just exactly right to make life possible. If the universe started by accident, why should there be any laws at all, let alone a tapestry of laws perfectly suited for life? Where did these laws come from? Newton, Kepler, and other founders of modern science assumed there are laws because God rules the universe. The Bible says that God upholds all things by the word of his power. The laws of the universe come from God, and his word is the tapestry that holds the laws together. Did you know that everything in the universe is made from only about 90 kinds of atoms? But those 90 kinds of atoms can combine into millions of substances, each with its own amazing properties. Consider the carbon atom. It's the most versatile building block in the universe, from lumps of coal to sparkling diamonds, from leaves on trees to human skin. All these have one thing in common. They're built up from carbon. No other atom bonds like it. Like a cosmic game of Tinker Toys, carbon links together into a host of different structures, millions discovered so far. Carbon's unique properties make possible the molecules of life. Change its properties just a little, and life itself would be impossible. The water molecule is just as amazing. Every chemist knows water is special. Unlike other common liquids, when water freezes, it floats, not sinks. If it didn't, when lakes froze over, the ice would sink and kill all the fish. All living things depend on water to transport oxygen, to move food, to remove waste, and the list goes on and on. Change the properties of a water molecule just a little and life would be impossible. Atoms are so intricately designed. How did they come to be in the first place? The Bible says the infinite creator made the building blocks of the universe, perfectly designed so life and the universe could exist. The Bible teaches that the earth was specially designed by God to be inhabited. The Earth is ideally placed in the galaxy to protect us from harmful radiation. If the Earth were in the center of the galaxy, or stuck in a globular cluster outside the galaxy, radiation would be a real problem. The Earth is also the right distance from the warming rays of the Sun. Our world is neither too hot nor too cold. Even the tilt of the Earth seems ideal to regulate heat. If the tilt were increased significantly, summers would be too hot and winter's too cold. If the tilt were decreased, the equator would be too hot and the poles too cold. The Earth's mass determines the strength of its gravity. Unlike Mercury, our Earth is big enough to hold on to life-sustaining gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide, but not so big that it is a toxic, gaseous giant like Jupiter. Life requires liquid water. Our planet sits just the right distance from the sun for water to flow as a liquid. In fact, three quarters of the Earth's surface is covered in liquid water. No other planet is known to have this essential ingredient of life. The Earth has just the right chemicals for life, 
About 99% of the universe is made of hydrogen and helium, but the Earth is different. It's made of heavier elements which can form compounds essential for life. The Earth has a large moon which keeps the oceans from stagnating, and a magnetic field which shields us from harmful radiation. The Earth appears to be an engineering marvel, crafted for life, the stage for unfolding God's glorious plan to dwell with man. If you found an ancient clay tablet with strange characters washed up on the shore, you couldn't read it. Unless someone had cracked the code. But you'd still know the letters represented a language, even if you didn't know anything else about the author or his civilization. Language is recognizable, even if you can't read it. Take Morse code. It has three basic parts, dots, dashes, and spaces. These three simple parts are combined to represent letters. There are 26 letters in the English language, which are combined to form over 400,000 words. Those words can, of course, be combined into an infinite number of sequences or sentences. There is evidence that DNA represents a language. Four basic units, called nucleotides, combine into a code for 20 amino acids. From those few amino acids, the body forms more than 100,000 proteins. Even if you can't read DNA, it still has all the hallmarks of language. A language that biologists are just now beginning to crack. Every tiny cell in our body is packed with three feet of DNA, three billion nucleotides. The similarity between DNA and human language is uncanny. In addition to codes, both use similar techniques to pack, access, rearrange, copy, and translate information. DNA seems to represent a language, the language of life. An unseen author, the creator of heaven and earth, has left a testimony of his existence in the DNA of every living thing. Humans need energy, energy to work, to walk, to think. Our cells even need energy when we sleep. And God provided a tremendous source of continual energy, the sun. The sun has all the energy we could ever need, but no human or animal on the planet can get its energy directly from the sun. Plants, on the other hand, can do exactly that. Every leaf of every plant has the ability to convert sunlight into energy energy we, in turn, can use. For that purpose, leaves have been designed to absorb sunlight, lead in carbon dioxide, and hold in water. Inside the cells of the leaf are amazing energy factories that pack the energy of sunlight into high-energy foods. Some molecules absorb sunlight. Others open and close portals. Others transport things. This sophisticated chemical factory performs hundreds of separate steps in perfect harmony. A symphony so complex that we have not yet fully fathomed it. Dozens of scientists are still working around the world to figure out the individual steps. And all this happens in millions of cells in every blade of grass every day of the year. And plants do much more than that. They produce oxygen, they provide homes for animals. They slow down erosion. They hold moisture. Every blade of grass, every rustling leaf, constantly converts the energy of the sun into food, oxygen, and shelter. That is an amazing testimony to God's wisdom and God's care and provision for all creation.
sun, created on day four of creation week to rule the day, to give light upon the earth, and to mark signs and seasons. Astronomers have found only a handful of stars anything like the sun. It is among the top one percentile for mass of stars. It's an ideal size to support life on Earth. Not too small, not too big. A huge red star would swallow the Earth, and a blue-white supergiant would blind us. The sun is an extremely efficient source of constant energy. Every second it produces enough energy to run one billion major cities for one year. Secular astronomers believe that the sun, formed from a nebular cloud of dust and gas four and a half billion years ago. If true, as the gases collected, the sun would have spun faster and faster, like an ice skater pulling in her arms, and in this case, it should be rotating once every few hours. But in fact, the sun spins only once every 25 days. The sun is well behaved, as stars go. Sure, it has a few flare-ups now and then, but some other stars have super flares, 100 million times worse than the sun's biggest flares. Just one super flare would destroy life on Earth. Stars also blast hot gases into space called coronal mass ejections, or CMEs. These CMEs would cause radiation poisoning and death on Earth. But our sun's CMEs are mild by comparison to other stars. And not only that, the Earth, unlike the Moon, is surrounded by a protective magnetic field. When this field is disturbed, we can see the results. It's called the Aurora Borealis, or Northern Lights. A beautiful reminder of how God has created and protected the Earth. Our solar system has a marvelous assortment of planets and other objects that orbit the sun with clockwork precision. Mercury, the closest planet to the sun, is a cratered, barren world with temperatures up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit on its sunlit side. The second planet is Venus. The thick, clouded atmosphere creates a surface temperature of 900 degrees Fahrenheit, even hotter than Mercury. Next is the Earth, so well designed for life. Mars, about half the size of Earth, has mountains, valleys, and canyons, but no liquid water on its surface. Mars has two small moons, each only a few miles across. Farther out are the gas giants. Made of hydrogen and helium, they have no solid surface. Jupiter, the largest of all the planets, is 11 times the diameter of the Earth and has more than 60 moons. The great red spot is an enormous hurricane, over twice the size of Earth. Saturn's amazing rings are made up of billions of moonlets orbiting Saturn's equator. Next are Uranus and its twin Neptune. These planets have strong magnetic fields. Given how rapidly magnetic fields decay, a biblical age of thousands of years makes sense. Also, in our solar system are comets, small chunks of ice and dirt that orbit in elliptical paths, losing material every time they pass near the sun. Comets can't last millions of years. Young comets make sense if the creation is only thousands of years old. The beauty of these worlds the precision of their paths and their variety point to the wisdom and glory of their Creator.
Consider the stars of the night sky. The Bible says that God created these wonders to mark the passage of time and to declare His glory. As the earth spins, the stars rise and set with clockwork precision. Stars are incredible sources of energy, glowing hot globes of hydrogen and helium gas. Our own sun puts out more energy every second than 100 billion nuclear bombs. But our sun is only one speck in an enormous galaxy of stars called the Milky Way, estimated to contain over 100 billion stars. But the Milky Way is only a grain of sand amidst a sea of galaxies. An estimated 100 billion galaxies are in the visible universe alone. Just imagine the power displayed every night, produced by 100 billion galaxies, each with millions to trillions of blazing stars. Yet God just spoke them into existence.